this computer. Okay. So I think we can start with portfolio management because that's a lot easier because that's like literally, you know, at, for now, one front end developer, right? And yeah. then, yeah. Um, and as I mentioned, front end team is, is the bottleneck. So I, I might, like, if we have time at the end, I might want to talk to you about that, okay. like, like uh, about future and plans like that. But for now, let's just get this part done. So I, I already went through this a little bit with the team. Um, with the portfolio management team. But if you look at um, what you see on my screen here, let me zoom in a bit. Oops. Uh, oops. So if you look at everything until the end of the year, you can see it's like really obvious stuff that people would have asked, like, why don't you have that, right? So like closing an Epic, we're trying to do, make a lot of um, uh, progress this iteration and then try to wrap it up in like one or two iterations so you see like system nodes and stuff like that that we're not doing now, but like system nodes, notifications and stuff like that will we'll wrap up in future iterations, but that's, yeah. that's what this is. Um, make epics easier to use. Um, that's like promoting epics. So, oh, from other places? Yeah, uh, promoting an issue to an epic. So that's oh, like okay. something making it really easy to do. Creating an issue from an epic. So when you click plus here right now, you can paste an issue, but you can't create an issue right away. So that's yeah. like something that would be super helpful. Uh, and so, and things like that, just to make it easy. And so the quick action to add issue to it. So we already have these two, but these are like, like tying it up in a nice bow, right? So we're releasing, like we're releasing this version in 11.2. And then this is to make it like even more spiffy. So again, right. these are like small, well, well, they're not, they're not new features. I don't, I don't think they're small, but, um, I think they will require time to do. So that's why, um, if you look at it, it's it's to the end of the year, right? So there's nothing new except for like closed epics, which I just mentioned. And even this one, we're, we're like quote unquote done already. This one is the one that um, implements this feature here, right? So it looks done, but then there is still like um, uh, this, for example, there's there's some backend stuff that, that the folks wanted to do. Um, uh, so right now it says 11.6 here. They wanted to um, show the actual milestone. So there's some like uh, making it perfect sort of deal here. Um, so that's why if you look at this, I'm trying to tell you that I'm being very conservative, right? So you can see like I'm saying. There's a lot of stuff there. Yeah, there's, there's a lot. But, but I'm saying that there's like another PM might say, oh, we have like a whole quarter. Let's do something new and awesome, right? So I'm <laughs> being super conservative and saying, the new and awesome, quote unquote, new and awesome is not really new. It's like, I mean, it's, it's new in the sense that it's a new functionality, but it's pretty obvious. It's like just closing. So basically you're, you're closing gaps of the experience. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. But that's, that's uh -huh. smart. I, I must say that that's smart. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I don't know if it's smart, but it's, um, we wanted to do a lot, a lot of this, but like my current plan, which, you know, you can say like, you don't want to do this or whatever but is just to do the closing and then, you know, notification stuff that we've started and we wanted to finish and then sorting as well, like sorting here, this yeah. type of thing, uh, making us sure that it saves to the back end and stuff like that. So there's like, like one or two more issues, I think. Right. Um, so if you look at that, so uh, sort direction to the back end, back end. And remote maps. Um, so yeah. So, so this one, for example, it's implemented, oops, like, start data end date and then we want it to be consistent so that this these two would be merged right and then create a date and last updated you can sort in both directions as well and then so there was an issue uh if you notice in the issues and merge request that was going on for a lot and there's like a lot of chatter so basically once that settles down i expect we can bring that exact same design and implementation yeah I, i'm following that now because uh fatih is out so i'm, I'm going to be exactly. monitoring that to review uh, and yeah. i just assigned myself to that issue so I'm oh, following awesome. yeah yeah like yeah I'm, I'm fine if we can't get it like i know it got delayed to 11 before and then if we can't get it that sucks but it, it uh, looks like it will be okay awesome yeah. so other than that the new things uh, I, I can go through this really quickly I, i'm going too slow so let me go a little bit faster because yeah. we have like the rest of, well, maybe not, not too bad because portfolio management is like new functionality. Maybe it deserves me a little, little bit of explanation. And then the rest of the functionality and plan is more obvious. Like they're, they're not super new ish stuff, but this one, uh, move forward backward in time in a roadmap is, um, just scrolling horizontally and vertically 
and then so okay. you can see see more things. So I can scroll down and scroll up, left and right, so on and so, so forth. Vertically is already possible. Is that what I'm saying? Yes, and so that's just um, vertically is definitely possible, but I wanted to include it just for designers and, and uh, developers. Mm -hmm. Just to say, like, oh. if there's any leftover work we need to do, um, for example, when you score horizontally, I expect new uh, epics to appear on the screen, right? Yeah. But when you scroll vertically, right now, I don't think you need that because we load everything on the screen all at once. So we might want to change that existing functionality to, to be more like pagination or infinite scrolling. So right. if we're doing the left, right, horizontal, maybe there's a good reason that we can we should adjust up down as well. Yes, so it makes why. sense so that it's visible. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I just realized so you don't like so you ladder. don't load like like right now. If you, for example, if you do this, I think it loads everything, right? So it takes a while. A little, as yeah, you can see, yeah. it loads literally everything, right? So that's that's not scalable, right? So right. Um, so there, so so that's that's that. I, I wanted to put like a placeholder there. And so you can see, I just put like that starting in December and goes for a whole quarter. So again, being somewhat. Yeah, um, but it's good to know. It's, it's one of those things about laying down the bricks to allow to get. Right. Well, actually, now that I'm thinking, it's a good thing we're having this call today because the people from, uh, from back end are pinging me regarding using GraphQL. Uh, oh, okay. API. Cool. And uh, what I'm thinking is that we're going to have to have a proof of concept first just to kick the, right. kick the tires around. But I think it should be ready to get, to get started on this part. And maybe this is a good candidate for us to, to try yeah. it out. Like a, um, as a feature, you mean? to, to Yeah, as a feature. Like technology, a, a yeah. fully fledged. Because the point, you, you're familiar with GraphQL, right? Well, I mean, I've heard about it, people saying about it. At right. So basically, the big, the, big, the big aspect of it is that front end would be able to do uh, calls to the back end that the back end didn't necessarily specify a specific endpoint for mm, that data. Interesting. Okay. So that makes the makes front end easier to develop because it's just like you're working on a, for instance, you're working on uh, epics, right? You want to have an epic resource exposed. We right. can ask anything there is to know about the epics. Anything. Okay. Regar regardless of whether they have specified a specific endpoint. Okay. Oh, Sometimes you have these issues that, oh, we're going to have to add a field to the backend API. Right. That, with GraphQL, that is no longer needed. Oh, so you just need to define the model. The resource, the exactly. And then yeah. it just goes and everything. About oh, okay. That. Interesting. Okay. And then we just ask, we, we send the request, like, I need A, B, and C. And it comes back with A, B, and C mm, okay. fields. That's, well, that sounds like a pretty interesting technology. It's pretty good. Okay. Yeah. Well, no, yeah, no, that, this might be good. Good, good to have this call, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's exactly what. Um, not <laughs> Your exactly, point. But uh, what are the points? Uh, this thing here. Yeah. Like, there was a lot of conversation about like just getting the dates. You know yeah. how it says eleven point five right now, but in Pedro's original design, he wanted the dates as well. Right. Um, for the hover, which makes sense, so you can see both dates. Um, mm -hmm. So I don't know if GraphQL would help with that, but that's like one of those small things that, like, oh, we had to cut scope because it, it like it turns out this extra work. Yeah, if it's not available in the API, then that wouldn't be a problem because it's always available. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It, that was exactly. That was exactly it. That yeah, was, we just like, have to transform it on the front end. Right. 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 Yeah, it's cool. So okay, so that's this one, and then like I said, I'm being super conservative in that. Uh, another reason I'm being, I want to be conservative here is we're still, I don't know if, what the future of GitLab is in terms of process, but you can see there's a lot of issues not represented on this roadmap, meaning these are like the big initiatives, but like the small bug uh, fixes, the small yeah. features. I, I'm trying my best to get all features, major features, like to be in the roadmap so that this type of conversation is not unrealistic. Um, right. that's, that's the idea there. So, I mean... But is that, isn't that like always hard? Because apart, if unless you, you have cases like we have the merge request refactor that is like spitting a lot of regressions, I, there's not really a way for us to bundle everything in one topic. Um, usually there's like random regressions here and there, bugs, right, bugs, right. bugs. Well, I mean but that, if it's one topic, they might be able to put it on the roadmap. Otherwise. As long as yeah, as long as there's a feature, I, I I will try to put it in an epic and expose it here, uh, like bugs yeah. and other things. Yeah. There might be even like big tech that things are, or UX polish things that we can put here. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, you're totally right. Those things are like, how do we represent those? To me, mm -hmm. it's, that's more like working with you and Sean and saying like, oh, you know, approximately every epic we spend like, you know, 50% of the time doing non-major things. Or so so that, that's why, I, again, I don't want to be too prescriptive here. And then again, like nobody's holding us super accountable right now that these are not slipping. 
Um, but these yeah. are just, you know, you know, approximate plans, but you know, things mm -hmm. might change in the future. Yeah. So, um, so that's what this is. So uh, this one is the, a bunch of these are work breakdown structure. So a, a big area when we're in talking with customers is doing sub epics essentially. So when talking with Sean and Annabelle, uh, they said like a better way to talk about is epic relationships instead of sub epics. Uh, uh -huh. So basically, parents, parents yeah, epic. but basically parent children relationship. Yeah. So if you look at, um, the, the idea here is that if you take this concept here, as you see, so that's like sort of the, what, what obviously it would look like. So you have an epic, yep. and you have children epics, and it can go on forever depending on the final design. But just getting that structure is super critical for customers and super useful and a lot of competitors have it. Mm -hmm. But once you have that, it will take a long time just to get the rest of epics and roadmaps, if not issues and merge requests, consistent with that paradigm and so that's like that that's like at the current rate that's going to take us like all of 2019 or most <laughs> of it right so so you can see for example this is just the basics so uh the back end api um on the epic page itself to do all those things that you would expect right mm -hmm. um and then on the roadmap itself i think i have a picture here um, doing, be able to do this, right? Like group it. Yeah, exactly. So you, you click one button here in Epic and then it, it expands, expands out. Exactly. Yeah. So, so basically once you have that structure, like it, it just becomes, it's not really a designing a new thing. It's a design problem in the sense like what do you design to account for all those specific cases? And that's yeah. pretty much the rest of 2019. So, so in, can I can I ask you this work this please. work breakdown? Will it go down all the way to the issues and merge requests? So, have like epic, uh, as soon as you have, like just like you have epic relationships, having relationships between issues and, and merge requests, like having parents, that sort right. of thing. So right now, with so everything that I just said is just epics with relationship to themselves and epic relationship to issue. We already have obviously, which is you know right that one you have, have yeah exactly. So I think your question is issues themselves. So this is, a, this is an issue. Issue right? to issue. Yeah, issue to issue. We have one thing, which is related issues, mm -hmm. um, which we already have here. Exactly. And then this epic here, which I um, linked to from one of these epics, is a two additional relationships, which is blocking issues, which a lot of people have asked for, and it hasn't really elevated to like super high priority yet, but you know, I've at least documented here, and then you can see approximate timeline here. Right, right. Um, and then sub issues, which is like parent child. Yeah. Right? And then, so this would be immediately applicable to the, uh, what you and Sean want to do, right? Like a the weights. product yeah. thing and the weights. So exactly. that structure I see being useful and solving those use cases. I purposely left it out of like, um, this view of por portfolio management, even though we could probably get the same team to work on it. But right now I wanted to focus just on ethics and clear mm -hmm. cleaning that out. And then, and then maybe roll in that sub issue stuff um, because we can definitely go to a customer and say, Oh, we don't have sub issues yet. You know, you know, you can sort of as a workaround still use sub epics. Yeah. Yeah. There is a workaround. I, it makes sense exactly. to do the epics first. Uh, I'm just wondering, cause it's, a, it's such a powerful concept. Cause if you exactly. think about it, once you have that relationship, you can start revealing that those interdependencies, like just like the one you were mentioning, if I change the milestone of an issue of a merge request, updating the issue, the exactly. same thing would be automatic for, and, and actually expected for uh, parent issues, that sort of thing. So exactly. a lot of things can be worked there and make things a little bit more uh, integrated. And yep. I definitely see the, the value in that. So good, yep. good. That, that, that's totally the idea. And then so the rest of these are filling in the gaps, like I said. So like yep. once you have that, then you can inherit children's start and end dates, which are just one issue for now, but I expect this to be expanded. So that's why, oh, it's one issue. You can do it in a month. Like, no, that's not going to happen. Right. So that's why you can see like, yeah, like two, at least two iterations. I've scoped it. True. True. Um, once no, I'll come back to this one, but then maybe um, uh, there's one, there's one, one concern I have. Sure. In that is that you, if you attack the inheritances of each property one by one, uh, you, you're going to be a little while until you have like everything covered. I'm wondering, if we shouldn't have a, a discovery phase to see, can we have a generic approach to inheritance? Like all fields are inherited, except they are explicitly mm. overridden, but that needs a UI 
that means a UI right, word, right? right? Yeah. Just say, this is from the parent, then a button to override it, and then you just do that, so. Um, so let me, yeah. let me, let me just write. Uh, mm -hmm. As a comment, right? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna put it in the description because I, I don't, and I'm still working on work breakdowns. Uh, it's, it's basically just to one participant, it's you. Right, right, right. And right. nobody else would be notified. Yeah. As discussed, no, but yeah, no, but I'm going to put it here. So when we come, like when I like ask the designers to start thinking about this. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the idea is just to consider, consider uh, evaluating a generic approach of inheritance that every uh, field gets inherited from the parent, except override. Uh, just date fields, for example. Yeah. Um, so like, yeah. Like labels, labels, yeah, labels, example, labels yeah. assignees, etc. Exactly. Yeah. When uh, these are applied to a child level, does it make sense to somehow bubble up to higher levels? Exactly. Those are the one of the questions. So it's just to have designers think about that problem, and then they will come up with. Yeah. Right. No, that's that's a really good problem. Like perfect. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, we should definitely design that because, like, yeah, I always don't like how issues in merge request are like out of split. Sync. Yeah, that that's yeah. a that's a great point. Okay, so that that's inheritance, um, mm -hmm. and then auto close is again sort of obvious. If like all the issues are closed, then you want to close the epic. Yeah. Searching in epics, so that's mostly back. Uh, hold, hold on, hold on a little bit. The auto close mm -hmm. epic, um, you have like what two cycles? One, two, three. Uh, I have June to August, so that's around two cycles. Okay, I'm trying to, to think what sort of complexity you expect there. Uh, that one is all uh, an epic should be auto close of these, yeah, in the immediate, so yeah. like it's just triggered. So if anything, I would think this is more backend-ish. Oh, it is, it is. I'm just wondering yeah. if to have three cycles assigned to it, uh, it kind of like meaning that it might have some complexity, but I would, I would expect a little bit less. Uh, okay, is it well then, that's fine. No, let's that, just be conservative, yeah. No, 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 exactly. So yeah. that comes from the conservative. It's yeah. also more of a Sean department, so I don't have visibility on that yeah, side. Yeah, no, no, yeah. I, I was just wondering, but that, let, leave it be for now. I, just, yeah. I was thinking out loud. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah. Carry on. No. Yeah. No. No problem. Yeah. Most of these are like around three cycles, anyways, and I just have right. them sort of like staggered here. Yeah. Yeah. And then so Paul, I'm just jumping around. Polish epic relationships are like uh, system nodes, quick actions, and creating a child epic from an epic. So, okay. um, that's that's wrapping up the the work breakdown structure there. Right. But if you look at, um, I don't know. I don't know if this goes further out. I don't think so. <laughs> Um, and then the rest are a little bit weirder. So this one is just showing weight information. So this is less about work breakdown structure. So, that, so, um, but this is weight information. Yep. Uh, on the Epic itself. So I'm on an Epic and I want to like, but what it's like, we already, we already have the design for boards, right? If, like, so we could, mm -hmm. we might want to just inherit that design. Just put the weight there. Yeah, exactly. I, I don't know if the designers want like a percentage complete and stuff like that. So, and then we also want this information on the, the I might have a quick mock up. Yeah. Uh, on the bars. Yeah. So, something like this, right? I made this yep. like a long time ago. Um, <laughs> Makes so, sense. and then this one is getting the, um, so I don't know if you know that we have a like bug that's been there forever. That's annoying. <laughs> but this is getting the actual milestone on the roadmap. Right. Um, Pedro has some designs. I don't really like them yet. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I don't like so far is I don't think he's been able to indicate start and end date yet of a milestone. And right. then, so this is my rendition, which looks hella ugly, right? So, um, <laughs> but I think we, but why I added this is to indicate the information that I think we should add to the roadmap, which is start date and end date of the milestone and also the weight of the milestone. So the meaning, the reason is that I haven't solved like back end and front end yet. Oh no, I think this might solve it, right? You can just filter by back end front end, but then some ethics have both, so it's weird. Um, but the idea here is the exact problem where we're experiencing right now. The problem is that I'm saying, oh, just look at this roadmap and just like tell me if this is reasonable, right? And then it's like, it's sort of a really hard ask for like an engineering manager, right? But like yeah. hopefully this is a little bit more reasonable in that 
you can actually see the milestone there and you can see the mm -hmm. some weight already. So then you, there's a little bit more truth to this. Well, it still uh, depends. On, it still depends on the issues having weights, right? Exactly. The issues are yeah. the ones that are going to determine the weight of an epic. Although, yeah, it is, yeah, so, it is something. If you have, if you're doing like pre-planning for like three releases ahead, we can do like a broad scope weight, right, uh, on a bundle of issues. So, it is definitely useful to have that visibility. Yeah. but yeah. So to me, this isn't. This this needs a lot of work in terms of design, not just visual design, like just this concept. Yeah. But what I wanted to illustrate here is that. Right now, when we're looking at a roadmap view, we're losing uh, milestone and some weights per information. And yeah. so, for example, one thing that's dissonant with this design or doesn't really, it doesn't make sense 100% is that this um, milestone, say 11.2, even though it's already filtered by this um, label, sure. you might have some issues that are not in any of the epics on this screen. So it doesn't really make yeah. sense, right? So if we take this vertical slice, it doesn't really represent, even if this is like you're saying like, oh, I'm going to do like, if Ooh, this is uniform right. distribution and I'm going to do a little bit of, like none of this is like perfect. So I, I don't think it needs to be perfect in the sense like everything is, is, is chopped exactly precisely. But at the same time, I think it might be, a, needs to, needs to be a little bit more realistic than this. So, but in any case, this is like scoped here for, for work to consider that. Right. Uh, we, right. we need to somehow incorporate, I, I'm pretty convinced, like milestone information. But is it just literally just going to be just vertical bar storing milestone information and we don't show like uh, a capacity weight information or, or does it include it? So I'm not sure what that right. is. Right. I'll leave that for design, but I'm, I'm a big fan of progressive disclosure. So you have exactly. like a small tip and then you click on it and it'll expand, give you right, a rainbow, right, right. that sort of thing. So I'll, 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 I'll be in sync with Pedro as well to, yeah. to, uh, to work on well, that. Well, I mean, topic. this is like all the way <laughs> far uh, in the way future. Ahead. Might even be different people, but doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, um, okay. But that's pretty much it. So for portfolio management. Yeah. So I don't know if you were sort of staring at the, the dates. Um, I, have we been, I have been taking a look at that. Um, so what I'm, what I'm thinking already is that there is some preparation of work that we might do, especially regarding, or at least making sure that we have GraphQL as soon as possible sorted, because a lot of these things could benefit from that. And, and then in terms of front end, from what I see, let me see. Um, yeah, I was thinking if there's anything that needs to be rewritten or refactored to, to have any of these things in place. So I don't think it needs to, but there are some places that might benefit from. Because I, I, I know that Kushal mentioned some refactors that could be done. Um, let me do it real quick. Uh, one. Um, Sorry, I was on mute. I think he wanted to do refactor for the sidebar, if not the entire epic. I think sidebar, maybe the entire epic. I forget. Um, there was one issue. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I have to go back and look at my notes. Um, issue boards. No, I have to go back. I don't have it right now, but I know that he mentioned something. So I will go back to my notes later and, and see what, what, what could be potentially required okay. to have a big rewrite. And what it means is just like, we just have to account for it, um, yeah. which might have to adjust or not uh, the dates. Yeah, but, yeah no, that's fine. But it's definitely good to know more or less what's coming. And then on my next one-on-one -on -one with him, I'm going to be like pinging him specifically. Yeah, on what yeah. Be written. Go, go, go ahead and, and push him to to get that like somewhere, like just scope. Like it doesn't have any detail, but like at least get get some issues going. Sure. We can exactly. Plot it in here exactly. Um, and then I don't know why this isn't showing up, which is annoying. I have one more epic. So, okay, yeah. So that does bleed off to the edge. So I have one that, uh -huh. that goes on, that starts in October and then goes to 2020. So that's swim lanes. Um, Got it. And yeah. so if you want to click, if you want to click on this issue, actually I have like this really awesome flow that I shared with uh, I hmm. and folks um, that shows you like, uh, from a use case perspective, like um, if you want to plan something at a high level and then track it over time, estimate and stuff like that, and you're you're really focused on epics, mm -hmm. what are the like what are the steps step by like a product manager does this, and then you talk with stakeholders and engineering yeah. and design, 
uh, you collaborate and then you do high level planning and then you create sub epics to scope it out and then you do weights and then you, yep. track, you use, you, you do assignments in uh, the boards and then you do this thing in roadmap and like, and then becomes bottoms up planning later on. Um, so this is like a flow of everything. And then, so all these, all the, all the work required to, to, to make this flow work is mostly mm -hmm. portfolio management. Right? Yeah. But that's where it came from. But that's why similar swimlands come so late, exactly. right? Um, well, or could we have some sort of MVC of a, of a swim lane before all that? Well, I mean, this, this flow is not intended to say like we build in the order of the flow. In order, right. It, it's not to do that. Um, right. But it's to, to mention the gaps. And, and I, you can, people can disagree, including yourself, but I think swim, like this particular feature is a lot harder. I don't think it's super critical just yet. And then so that's why I, I've, I've put this further out uh, in the, in the, uh, in the roadmap. And so the roadmap is really focused on whoever it is, um, yeah. uh, uh work breakdown structure first, and then okay. looping back to adding swim lanes on boards. And then what's sort of interesting here is that it's the reverse of what I just talked about. So if, uh, so I'll show you this. So this is a roadmap view and then you see milestones, right? And so yeah. roadmap view is sort of the base uh, visualization here. The mm -hmm. timeline, it, time in this roadmap view is, um, is like time as in like calendar time, right? It, it's right. step by step. It, it's linear in that each unit of centimeters is, corresponds to linear. Yeah. A milestone, row, in, a milestone board boards. view yeah. board is sort of different because people could have different size milestones yeah. And then you, again, you see work, but you see issues instead of epics. But now what you do is you, you introduce the epics into the milestone view via swim lanes. And so you can see how it's like sort of the, the yin and yang of this view where one thing doesn't have the other. And then now you're introducing it to it. So like my vision is when you combine these two, it should help with design or maybe you can somehow merge these. I, I don't know yet, but yeah. um, that's my preliminary. So Maybe I'm, not get, maybe I'm not getting swim lanes concepts. Oh, um, because what, my, my problem right now with boards, or at least one of the things that I've been hearing um, Tim struggle with, is when we jump to the boards, it's not like there's no way of seeing progress on the issues. Like we have them on the lists of assignees mm -hmm. or something, but some of them are already in review. Some of them haven't even, haven't even been started, and that's not exposed. Uh, so I thought right. swim lanes would help that, but maybe it's not. So what well, is a swim lane? It, well, this is also a problem that Pedro highlighted. Like our boards are so powerful and flexible that it's not prescriptive, which I like. Um, exactly. Yeah. Um, but this is one version of like in my crazy world, yeah. you can create a swim lane for everything. You can have a milestone swim lane. An assignee swim lane, a label, a label. swim lane, and then an All epic right. swim lane. You so it, it would be possible. It would be possible. Right, yeah. right, right. With the so in, because, depth, in, in review. Yeah. Exactly. So my point is that like okay. um, a list is just a dimension. And then now we have three things that we can put on this list. And you can yeah. have like an epic on the list too. Like nobody's stopping right. us from doing that. Exactly. And then so my I, crazy idea is like, I haven't told this to like Pedro, or I don't even have an <laughs> issue, is that a swim lane could have the same four dimensions. I mean, this would like make, Pedro really annoyed and angry and whatever. So, <laughs> and I like, I don't think we need to have that conversation right now. So that's why I didn't yeah. bring it up. But like, to me, that's how I think of boards. It can be super like flexible. Versatile, yeah, exactly. Yeah, right. So I, I don't know if that's the future of boards. Like Pedro, I, I don't, th Pedro, I don't think disagrees with that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I could be convinced either way. So but right now, at least it's flexible enough to have three types of, of lists. Right, and um, he's doing he's doing discovery there now. Exactly, exactly. So, exactly. Okay, no, that 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 makes sense. I, I let me explain why I raise this is just because I feel like that's such an important mm -hmm. like improvement. So there are, there are two major improvements that I feel the boards kind of like need before twenty twenty. Uh, <laughs> now you're thinking like me, like two years in. A <laughs> yeah, yeah, before because that sounds really far ahead, right. really far away. And what I, so one of the things that I've been struggling with is the logic, like not having a not, for example, operator, right, like right. to exclude certain labels. So imagine all issues that don't have deliverable. 
Right. That's not possible. Exactly. And that, and that thing of the status, would, I would say that it's some of the most things that I'm feeling. But mm. I'm fine with following the roadmap, of course. That's not the point. I'm just saying, raising that right. for you for as feedback. Yeah, no, no, no. No, you can definitely influence the roadmap. Right, right. You, so, sure. but in terms of that uh, epic actually reworking everything following the discovery, it makes sense to have it after right. all of this. So, okay. Um, okay, I think for portfolio management, we're kind of yeah. so are you like are you okay like do like again i know it takes a lot to actually put accurate effort estimate yeah. but like is this like radically ridiculous no uh, the yeah. only thing the only thing that kind of popped right away into my head my eye was the auto close being okay. three cycles the rest i i do think we should plan for that because there's always like some lingering small improvements that we can do in the third one right um but and again we'll as we get closer we'll get more um uh, accurate um, yeah so but for now i don't necessarily see any uh things what i will do as a homework or after this call mm -hmm. is check that that need for any refactor in this sort of area yes, that yes. Can benefit. i think that's great and yep, then I'll, I'll get back to you i'll get back to you once i have that information sure. and, and we can reassess yep yep and then we'll just like my plan is that we would just insert it and then we just shift everything Yep. And yeah. then we would need a feature for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, as I said, like, this is the type of thing I want to keep sharing with Yog and other stakeholders and say, like, uh, we need more capacity if we want to. If you guys yes. think this is, like, a really awesome vision, if you, like, senior leadership of DLAB mm -hmm. think this is an awesome vision of, of, of plan, uh, plan, if you think it's strategic to do it sooner, then, you know, let's uh, more get more people working on these things. So, yeah, for um, sure. For sure. That, that's the idea. So yeah. if I if I close if I uh, remove this uh, becomes a lot right. crazier. So now um, you would want to remove portfolio management from. Yes, we don't have. I don't have exactly the feature, but that's actually one of mentioned. that. That's actually one of the epics. So <laughs> that's exactly what um, you said. The logic, right? Um, yeah, yeah. But let me just go go through this really quickly. Um, or or maybe this is the part where you can say like, no, we'll never do that. Like, or it'll take a lot. It'll take <laughs> a lot things. longer. So, so this is, you sort of have to just filter about, filter away portfolio management, which I know is really hard. Yeah. So I'll if you look best. at, so this is, these are wrapping events. up the performance yeah, is back in. We talked about yeah. this. We talked about this. We talked about this. This is the one that I'm, I'm almost like not caring anymore. I, I mean, I do care about it, but it's like. It's the gray the, area. I get you. Yeah. And then on the front end side, you're managing it. And then on the back end side, it's, it's one, it's Mario. So it's not, it's not like. Huge uh, impact. Yeah, so there, there, there's, it's not a huge impact on the uh, capacity. Right. Burn down charts. Uh, so there's a couple of crazy ones here. So let me scroll down right. and see. Sure. So burn down chart in boards is, I have it scoped to the end of the year, which okay. is, again, pretty conservative. And then now it gets becomes hard because then you're supposed to look at everything at the same time. But um, it's fine. Basically, the idea here is to put the burn down chart inside uh, uh issue board mm -hmm. um because um you can do it here i mean that's this is the design as you can see right the switch but the idea is that button. once you click the edit button you already have the scope of the issues yeah. and then if you've if you've chose chosen a scope that uses a milestone yeah. then the burn down chart is well defined right yeah so so that's the design here and the, the idea is that then you can use a burn down chart directly in your board and you can use it like like agile whatever and then you don't have, and then it's actually useful, like for us, because we're, we don't care about the rest of other people's, or like for you, you would like, you yeah. wanted at least two burn down charts. Yeah, I don't want to like, out yeah. from front. Well, I mean, I mean, both between teams and then between both back end and front end, yeah. you might yeah, look at true. four burn down oh. charts, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, um, but that, that's the idea for, for burn down charts. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, got it. So, again, shouldn't be that radically different, uh, or extra yeah. effort, it's nothing new, um, but you know it, it takes some finite work so that's still but we, do we have that feature now no no okay so like, like we have burn down charts just burn down charts but we do not have it in board at all we have so it the, we do not have it in the board no but you have it elsewhere oh the burn down chart is at the milestone level oh yeah sorry i, I know a lot of people don't use milestone so I don't or, or don't burn use don't burn down charts so that's why even at gilab people don't know about it so that's totally fair so uh -huh. we do have this feature uh and it's here um so this has uh, been implemented like a while back, like I think late 10.x 
we, we right. implemented this. Okay. So I'm just wondering, I'm just wondering, because I wasn't aware of it. So if it had to be re implemented from scratch, there might be a bit of a problem. But if we can reuse it, um, then it's less of a problem. So, so yeah. So the current thinking is to reuse it, uh, the, the code, obviously. There's some work that I will hopefully scope out in the next couple of weeks. So, so if you saw the Slack conversation, we want to do charting in general. And so yeah. I wanted to clean up burn down charts because that's a chart in plan. And we don't have too many charts in plan, so it's not that bad, which is like monitoring team has a crap load of charts. So if they wanted to redo charts, it sucks. And that's what their plan is. But basically yeah. the, the current uh, thinking that in talking with Josh PM, who's PM like for like five different areas, which is crazy. Um, I think at least three, I don't know if five scenes. <laughs> I think yeah, like he's like I Meltano guess. monitoring this, uh, whatever. Right. So, but then, uh, so Maltano is this crazy data, data science project that I sort yep. of know what's going on, but not really. But um, according to Jacob Schatz, um, a really cool idea, which is the working plan, is that we will take some libraries inside, front end libraries from Maltano that he's working on and make them dependencies in GitLab, the product. And so that we will be able to um, leverage that in creating charts in GitLab and we'll have a consistent way of creating charts in terms of front end logic. Right. And then that's the name the of that. Yeah. That's the conversation we're going to have in that chat, in that scope to see what is the best way. Uh, exactly. I don't, I don't necessarily have a, 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 a opinion right now, but right. we need to learn more about it. Exactly. Exactly. So, okay. so there, there's some discussion there ongoing. Um, but so that, that might impact this work. So, so I totally expect like these will change, but that, you know, that's fine. Right. But for now we can look at burn downs as just like exposing yeah. them on words. Exactly. Exactly. Got it. That's actually uh, a cool feature. That's yeah. That's yeah. Cool. No, no. I mean, the fact that you don't know about it is a failure yeah, of, yeah. of us building this and it's being useless. So like, to be fair, to be fair, I'm recently focusing on the plan side as a manager, right? Well, no, no, I'm not, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about you as a manager, not using this not, tool exactly, exactly. is a problem, would, right? It and is. then so Discovered when I joined that. GitLab in late 2016, this was, this EE feature was cr like in the double digits of EE. Like our, our EE uh, issue numbers, I think are four digits now or three digits. Oh, double digits, really? This was double digits. So this what? was true. Burn the people <laughs> wanted burn down charts forever. Yeah. And then when I joined, I think that issue was like one or two years old. And then we finally <laughs> did it. But like, I wasn't really a good, I, I don't claim to be an amazing private <laughs> manager now, but I was definitely a worse one before. Cause we like, I really wasn't doing the, like thinking really hardly part about like, like plan is the, is the plan and create are like the best product areas because you will be forced to use them. So <laughs> I didn't think of a way to like how we develop it and use it ourselves. Right. And so this has been lingering forever. And yeah. then so finally, like over it's a year up. later, we have a plan to nice. be able to use it ourselves. So I'm that's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah. And, and like that. Just, uh, I had an issue that I had four digits and I was excited. That's how new I am. <laughs> that's amazing right we exactly that's really yeah, good yeah this has been been yeah people have been asking for it. so we finally okay. did it pedro did the design way yeah. back and then so we have this um and we want to bring cool. it to board okay let's let's uh, maybe rush a little bit so that we can have time yeah it's fine we we don't have to finish it um okay. but so it's just burn down chart on cool. board there's uh import your issues to gitlab issues which is okay. um yeah i will go faster um but it's basically a quick CSV import. Right. Um, so that's the idea. So let me so it's more of a back end effort. Uh, it should be a back end effort, minimum front end in minimum that UI. Uh, a UI to just upload a CSV. Yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, and then this is group milestones, parity of project milestones. This is, uh, sorry, this is literally one issue right now, which is, um, oh, no, 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 it's not. Sorry. It's, yeah. um, this is the existing cleanup. So there's two more issues. Okay. So, so this is pretty much done. Uh, this is scope for this issue, a milestone or 11.5. And this should be a backend issue mostly, I think. Got it. And then this uh, dynam deprecate dynamic milestone pages. Uh, do you know what I'm talking about there? Uh, not really. So I heard this about is, it and I heard about it on, C on, me on meetings, but not really clear. Right. So this is, that's why it's like really confusing. That's why we want to deprecate it. So this is just really quickly. So this is, no, this is fine if we go over. This is a good use of time. Um, yeah. I, I actually have a meeting after. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Yeah, yeah. No, no. We'll, we'll, we'll end right on time. Um, 
So there, there are a bunch of milestones on this page. Um, yeah. we, I, I, like if you look at the, my bottom left hand screen, mm -hmm. you will see that when you do this, you, you notice how it's, it's searching for the milestone. Yeah. Right. So when you click on this, this is a dynamic milestone page. I'm pretty sure in that a group milestone is like a native group milestone object. Mm -hmm. um, but this one is actually, there's two projects inside GitLab that are called these things. Yep. Both of these projects, if you click on them and you click onto their milestone, the milestone is called V10 and V10, right? So yep. these are two separate milestones in the database, right? One is to the Gitly project. Yep. One is to the GitLab runner project. But if you look at this um, view, Mm -hmm. This is a quote unquote dynamic because when you click on it, it creates this dynamic page which sucks in these two milestones, huh. which then sucks in all the issues from all the milestones. So this is like, like somebody invented this before there was group milestones and you can see how that makes sense, right? Yeah. Cause yeah. you just want something to group multiple projects but together. Is it, is it matched, matched by the name? Matched by the name. Okay. It made sense then. It doesn't make sense now. Yeah, Got and then it. so it's Definitely. really messy if you think about it, and yeah, it's, it is. it's matching name. And then you, if you want to share, use reuse the name, then you're screwed. So yeah, that's yeah. why when, I, when you open this, I was like, oh, but they're related. No. Yeah, they yeah. Might. So that's why it's confusing, right? So. Got it. Perfect. Um, makes sense. So that's why Definitely. we wanted to get rid of this, and so. No, I know. So it's we, removal we, of code, removal of stuff. Exactly the the functionality. So redirects that sort of thing. Exactly. So hopefully okay. that's not too bad. Managing multiple boards that the starring thing yeah that's the starring thing i'm pushing uh, uh pedro to help design about so not a lot there yet so this will probably push it out in the future um analytics chart dashboards that's um that's the board stuff i was the stuff i was talking about so i, I actually don't worry about the dates because this will probably change so yeah, I, let's so not, not go through that Award emoji cleanup, there's a lot here. So I'm just trying to put one or two every single iteration. Yeah. But okay. uh, th these are all small, right? So emoji yeah, yeah. Making, extending that standard order emoji tabs. So nothing right. huge there. Yeah. Um, this one's a big one. Move default description templates out of project settings. So if you go to a project such as this one, uh, if you go to a pr any project, then the, this, I don't know if you know this, the description template is here, right? You have this description template here. Right. Yeah. And yeah. you have the same one here. Mm -hmm. The, the non-default one is source control. The default one is not source control. And you're like, why the hell ah. is that? The reason that happened is that we, if you look at the history of this, is like before my time. Um, this is like, right. like seven dot something or eight dot something. It's like a long time ago. We, <laughs> we created this feature, I think, in Star, uh, before it, was, it wasn't called Starter because we just had Enterprise back then. Um, yeah. and, then, and then later on, we added the source control version. So, but people, because we moved so fast at GitLab, we never cleaned that up, right? No, it's mm -hmm. obvious. So uh, the, the, the scope of this work is to get that into source control, um, out of the project settings and into the source control, so there's a lot of backend work. Well, I think it's mostly backend work, right? If you think about it. But is it uh, like just removing it from the settings and asking people if they want to do that, do it through source control? Exactly. And then okay. if you go through source control, we'll have like some default. It will be like default M, like it will be default MD will be the one it reads from automatically. But the reason there's like four issues for this is that we're, we're doing like a migration path and we want to put like a lot of messaging and make sure that people know what's going on because we are changing existing data. Got it. Um, so Makes that's, sense. that's the idea here. So uh, in terms of actual work, I don't think it's, it's a lot, especially for front end. Um, but there, there is some, some finite work there. Mm -hmm. Um, version issues, issues, version issues and merge requests. Um, right. is right now has only one thing, but already this is like in the future, right? So this is pretty, um, this is, History. This is pretty, it'll take a while. I, I don't know if it's, this should be one issue, but basically it's just doing this. Like you see the comments. Yeah. yeah. Basically on the system notes, just having an expanded. Yeah. I, I've yeah. seen this before. Yeah. Yeah. So and I'm actually, maybe this isn't that bad. Maybe, again, a lot of front end to do the is diff. Is it just this one? Yep. 
Okay. Right, right, right now, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So this is just system notes, not not description yet. Um, but isn't this like version, version issues and merge request description? Because it it sounds like you'd have like a version one of an issue, version two of an issue, which is not what oh, you. Want. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I mean, it's a bad. Yeah, maybe I'll just change it right now. So this yeah, is exactly. this is changing the description and yeah, not the comment. Sorry. So why don't I just change this? Uh, Uh, issue and merge request description changes something like that yeah. Um, yeah yeah so so that's what that is again that's one issue easier hopefully. got it yeah um that we talked about yes. this is this is the one that we just said or you wanted right Ooh, so all these nice. are now in 2019 as you can see right I can live with that I can live that nice yeah. nice so <laughs> this one um is just literally just these two, right? So I, I anticipate the developers will say like there's a lot more than just this. But right now, <laughs> we we when I joined, like maybe a month or two after I joined, we implemented um, this UI, this thing here. Yeah. yeah. We implemented this on the issues, and it was like uh, really terrible in that no, there was like so many we bugs. Need to factor that. I, I, we, do, we just had a discussion on the whip thing. We need oh, to that one? I'm like, why is factor. that taking so long? But I'm like, I'm not going to add more of like... Yeah, but there's... there's I, I don't want to I don't want to annoy people by like intruding into that issue. That's a crazy... Right, right. But we want to... We wanna, so that's basically, we've already learned that we need to refactor that part and maybe right. we need to refactor that before we get to do this bit. The knots and the logic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, right. we're just going to keep adding to the technical depth. Right. And that's what, like, when we, whoever designed this, like, was, like, maybe they designed it, like, a summer before I joined in 2016. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they had, like, not, like, this logic thing was there forever. And then, like, that was one of the reasons we have, like, this thing here. Because it's, like, it's a really good design to add the logic operators, if you think about it, right? So, um, that's been, and people have been asking that for, like, two years or more, right? So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, we're getting close. Is there any, like, last thing that I should be made aware of? Um, like, maybe we can do another session or re wait for Sean, but um, I'll let yeah. you read, read through the rest. I, 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 no, I'm really happy I got through the portfolio management ones because mm -hmm. that's like, I can focus on that, especially with Yo. Cool. But um, yeah, why don't I let you just what, let okay, you we go. Can have a, we can have another session next week because um, this, this week I'm going to check with Kushal and he, and he refactor okay. and have a touch base next week again. Just put yeah, it in let's the Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. Cool. And then, yeah, so I'll, I'll let you read through the rest of these. Or they're, Actually, most of them are portfolio management because the rest of these go to the end of 2019. Yeah. And then there's other yeah. crazy, like, custom fields and custom emoji. Like, <laughs> don't, like, you see this thing? Like, it goes on forever. Like, page with design yeah. this arrow, right? Or this thing that means it never ends, right? <laughs> oh. <laughs> or there's no end date. This is what Wait. that means. There's no end date. So it means no it's, it's infinity, right? So same, it. same, <laughs> same as Elasticsearch, right? It seems like the reason to me Elasticsearch forever. never ends the reason yeah. to me it never ends or I, I don't have confidence in it because it's so technical that right. I don't know what the hell Sean is talking about. Like, like it's him and, and Nick and Valerie and then they're like talking <laughs> about these things and issues like, and then yeah. they ask me questions and then I'm like, uh, can you like explain to me what this means? And then like, yeah. I'm on calls and translate to English. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So when it's so technical, it's really hard for me to get a grasp of like when it will. And yeah. I, I keep asking Sean and like, he does like a decent job of like doing estimate Explaining. of when it will done and stuff. But, but there's like so much work and then it's not just development work. I think there's a lot of like system, like other teams has to get yep. to work on the thing. Hey, Dimitri, uh, we're just wrapping up a call. So, um, okay. But yeah. So, okay. Thank you, Andre. I will. Thank you very uh, much, Victor. I'll talk to you later. This was really useful. Okay. Talk later. Bye. Right. So you have a good day. Uh, Dimitri, I'm recording this call. So I'm going to stop this call and then come back in.